Hi guys, welcome to the Winona Vest tutorial. I'm Natalie from Daisy Chain Patterns, and today we're gonna sew through the lined version of the Winona Vest. Looks like this. We're gonna do the collar, and we'll go through both the inverted pleat pocket and the saddlebag pocket. For this project, you're gonna to wanna to read through the instructions and gather all your materials. We're gonna need interfacing, pins or clips, buttons or snaps, Microtex or denim machine needles, all-purpose thread, some snips, a seam ripper, a sewing gauge, your marking tool of choice, a point turner, and your cutting tools. I chose a plaid wool flannel for my contrast fabric and a natural canvas for the main fabric. And for my lining, I chose a vintage poly cotton bed sheet. Here I have cut out the saddlebag yoke in the contrast fabric. My collar is cut out in the contrast and main fabric. The inverted pleat pocket is cut out in the contrast and lining fabric. The saddlebag pocket is cut out in the contrast and main fabric. And I have the lined round neck bodice fronts and backs both cut out in the main and lining fabric. We're gonna start with the yokes. You're gonna need your yoke pieces and your front and back bodice pieces in your main fabric. You're not gonna need your lining. So to begin, we're gonna work from the wrong side of the fabric. My fabric doesn't have a wrong or right side, so I just chose one. And we're gonna run a basting stitch about quarter inch away from the bottom edge. Now before I press these bottom edges, I'm going to clip about half an inch apart and I'm just going to do that all the way along the bottom edge. To reduce some bulk, I am going to cut notches on the convex curves and you can do that by either cutting little V's along where you clipped or you can fold the seam allowance in half and cut at an angle to create a small V. And you just want to cut right before your basted line. You don't want to cut into that. You can see on the concave curves you don't need to cut the notches because when you fold it over the seam allowance spreads out. Next, I'm gonna press all of the yoke hems to the wrong side along that basting line. Here I'm gonna press my front yokes since my fabric doesn't have a wrong or right side, I'm just making sure that I'm not facing them in the same direction and I'm going to mirror them. I'm going to pin my yoke piece to the main fabric of the body, lining up the shoulders and the neckline. And you just want to make sure that you are doing this with the right side of the main fabric up. 
and the wrong side of the yoke facing down. So both right sides will be facing up. We're gonna do the same thing for the front yokes, just making sure that we are mirroring either side. Now I'm gonna baste the yoke pieces down with a quarter inch seam allowance, working around the shoulders, the neckline, the armhole, and the center fronts. And then I'll edge stitch the bottom folded edge down. Once I finished basting, I moved on to edge stitching the bottom edge. I found it helpful to roll up the top of the vest so it's out of the way as I'm working. And I used my thread snips to help ease the fabric under the presser foot. You'll use the same method for each of the front yokes. Here I'm removing some of the basting stitches that we're showing and then I'm going to give everything a nice press before I move on to the pockets. Now we're going to do the inverted pleat pocket with the flap. You're going to want to grab all of your pattern pieces and if you're doing matching pockets, we recommend making them at the same time. For the inverted pleat pocket, I'm going to transfer the fold lines from the pattern onto my pattern piece. And you can either do this with a marking tool or you can clip into the fabric. Working with the wrong side facing up, you're gonna press the outermost folds toward the center. Next, we're gonna flip the pocket to the right side and bring the folds to the center, and this creates the pleat. And give that a good press. You have the option to edge stitch the inner folds of the pleat. This helps keep a crisp fold, but it's not mandatory. So this is what that looks like. Now we're basting the pleat down at the top and bottom of the pocket with a quarter inch seam allowance. Once your pleat is finished, you're gonna grab your outer lining fabric. And with right sides together, you're gonna sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance along the top edge. Now we're gonna flip the pocket open to the right side and press the top edge. After pressing, we're gonna edge stitch the top pocket edge. Now set that aside and grab your inner lining piece and your flat piece. And with right sides facing, we're gonna sew them together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now you're gonna to wanna to grade the corners and flip the flap right side out. I'm using a bamboo point turner to help me get the corners nice and crisp. 
Make sure to clip into the seam allowance of your lining where the flap ends. This is a small step, but super important. Let's give it a good press. Check those corners one more time and edge stitch around the flap. Now you're gonna to wanna to align the wrong side of the inner lining with the right side of the outer pocket along the bottom edge, pin around the edge, and then you will sew with a 3 8 inch seam allowance along the raw edges. Next, grade the seams and corners of your pocket before turning it right side out. Give it a good press before taking it back to the machine for edge stitching. Edge stitch the right edge of one pocket and the left edge of the other pocket to later distinguish the left and right openings. Transfer the pocket placement markings from the pattern onto your fabric. Pin your pocket in place. I'm using a marking tool to mark my starting and stopping points on the pocket. I'm also marking my sew line across the top of the pocket and remember just to make sure that your top stitched edge is closest to your side seam because that will be left open. Start sewing on the edge of the pocket closest to the side seam one and a quarter inch down from the bottom and make your way around the pocket. Sew past the pocket opening about half an inch and across the flap. Then when you pivot down the other side of the pocket, sew about one and a quarter inches. To finish the pocket, you're gonna sew two lines across the top of the flap. And lastly, you have the option to put a bar tack at either side of the pocket opening. Moving on to the saddlebag pocket. The double decker pocket is constructed in the same way. Gather your pattern pieces. Begin by pressing the top hem of the patch pocket. Flip the hem over so that right sides are facing and pin in place before basting around the outside of the pocket. Remember, you can always check the instructions for exact measurements. Notch those curved corners to reduce bulk before you press them inward. Now flip the top hem of the pocket to the right side, and then you're gonna press all of the remaining raw edges in to the wrong side. Thank you. 
Now we're going to edge stitch the hem of the pocket down. Transfer the pocket placement guides from the pattern onto your fabric. And then pin it down. Then we're going to edge stitch the pocket down. Prep your pocket facing by applying interfacing. And if you don't want to do that, like I am here, I'm just hemming the outer edge of the facing with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And before I press it, I am cutting notches along that outer curve. And now here I am pressing that 3 8 inch seam allowance to the wrong side of the facing. And now with right sides together, you're going to pin the pocket facing onto the opening of the pocket. And now you'll sew it on there with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Go ahead and clip that curved edge um, right up into the seam line. before flipping the facing to the wrong side of the pocket and giving that edge a nice press. Edge stitch your facing down and you can do one or two rows of stitching along here. That's totally your choice. I'm also going to run a line of stitching along that pocket inner edge. Make sure you give your pocket a nice press after you've attached the facing just to let everything settle into place. And then I'm going to grab the flap lining. And I'm gonna grab my pattern piece too and just make sure I'm transferring all of the notches and markings I need to transfer. Here I'm using my snips to clip those markings or you can use a marking tool. And then with right sides together, I'm going to pin the pocket flap lining to the outer pocket piece. With a 3 8 inch seam allowance, we're going to sew the pocket flap lining to the outer pocket, beginning and ending at the notches. And then remember to clip and notch your curves before turning the pocket right side out. Now you'll need to press the remaining raw edges of the pocket 3 8 inch to the wrong side. That'll be the top of the pocket and either side before the flap. I'm about to press the flap of the pocket and I'm using a bamboo point turner to help me really get those curves nice and smooth. I'm making sure that my notches are still marked and I'm going to edge stitch around the pocket flap with two rows of stitching. You can do one or two. And you just want to make sure that you're not stitching past the notches because you want a good three quarters of an inch still hanging at the top of the flap lining.
I'm giving my pocket a good press and then I'm gonna fold the top half of the pocket back away from the flap lining and press it away from that. I'm gonna mark a line three quarters of an inch above the lower patch pocket and use this line to place my upper pocket with the wrong side of the pocket flap to the right side of the vest. And I'm gonna pin that in place. And here I am sewing down the edge of the lining with an 1 8 inch seam allowance. Um, just make sure that you don't sew through the upper pocket and you're only sewing through the lining. I'm gonna give that a press and then fold the whole pocket back down and press the seam I just sewed. And then I'm going to stitch across that with a one quarter inch seam allowance. And you should have about half inch to three quarters of an inch gap between the patch pocket and where the top pocket is attached. Now we're gonna finish stitching the top of the pocket on. We're gonna start along that top edge, pivot at the corner, and sew down until we hit the top stitching of the pocket flap so it just looks continuous. And I'm gonna do two rows of top stitching. And you can see here, this part is pretty thick with the canvas, so my foot gets a little stuck, but just go slowly over these parts. And again, stitching down to where the top stitching of the flap starts. And then to finish the pocket, I am going to stitch the other short edge on. In the same way, I'm gonna do two lines of top stitching or edge stitching there. Next up, we're gonna do the collar. You're gonna need your collar pattern pieces and the interfacing. I'm gonna prep my pattern pieces. I am not interfacing my collar because the fabric is pretty thick, but if you do, just remember to follow the instructions for prepping that. I'm aligning my collar pieces right sides together, and then I'm going to be sewing them with a 3 8 inch seam allowance around the outside edges. And just remember, you're gonna go around the outside edges and leave that bottom edge unsewn. Before I flip my collar right side out, I'm going to grade the corners. And then I'm gonna use a hot iron and a bamboo point turner to help me get those corners nice and pointy. And now I'm gonna edge stitch around the outside edge of the collar, pivoting at those corners. And I'm just making sure I get a nice corner on that and it's your choice whether you want to do one or two rows of stitching around there. Thank you. 
and I'm gonna give that a good press. And now your collar is ready to be attached so we can set it aside. Now we're ready to start construction on the line version and you're gonna need your fronts and backs of the vest in both your main and lining fabric. And remember, you just wanna have all your pockets already attached to the main fabric. And if you're doing a collar, just have that set to the side. Starting with the shoulder seams, I'm gonna align the fronts and backs of the vest. Um, first, I'll start with the main fabric and then I'll move on to the lining fabric. And with right sides together, I'm pinning those shoulders before I sew them together. And then I'm sewing those shoulders with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I'm pressing the shoulder seams. You can press the shoulder seams of the lining forward and the main backward so that you nest the seams and that means you'll be sewing through less bulk when you get to that seam. For whatever reason, I decided to press these seams open on my main fabric, I think because this seam was just so bulky that I felt like it would distribute that bulk a bit better. I'm gonna grab my collar and I'm marking the center back so that I can pin it in place before basting it onto the vest. I'm gonna line it up with the center back and then the shoulder seams as well. And I'm pinning it so that both right sides are up, meaning the right side of the vest body and the right side of the collar are both face up. I'm basting the collar on and my fabric is pretty bulky so I'm just going slow and lifting my presser foot um, and project to check underneath to make sure I'm not sewing any wrinkles into the collar. With right sides together, I'm layering the main and lining vest bodices together and I'm pinning around the center fronts along the neckline and back down the opposite center front. And then I'm gonna sew them together with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna start at one of the bottom hems and make my way around. This is a really long seam, so we've edited out a bunch of it but you're gonna go up one center front around the neckline and back down. And here I'm sewing the collar on as well, so there's a lot of bulk. So just go slow where you need to. Now we're gonna line up the armholes. Again, right sides together for the main and lining fabric and Pin those really well and just so that the fabric is distributed. And then we're gonna sew each of the armholes with a 3 8 inch seam allowance.
And once you're done, just make sure that you are clipping all of your curves. And you'll repeat this for each side. Now this part may look tricky, but it's very simple. I'm reaching from the back of the vest through the shoulder and grabbing the front vest and pulling it right side out. And you'll do this for each of the shoulders. And you can see the vest lining is now attached to the mane. And I'm using my bamboo point turner just to help me with any corners. And then I'm going to press all of the seams. So both armholes, the center fronts and neckline. And then I'm going to pin the side seams together. So I'm opening up the main fabric and the lining fabric and making sure that the underarms meet, pinning those together and then pinning the side seams of the main back and front together and the lining back and front together. I'm sewing the side seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Just make sure when you get to the underarm that your seams are aligning. To finish the bottom hem, we are going to turn the vest inside out one more time and we're gonna align the bottom hem, lining and main together with right sides together. And I'm using clips on this. So I'm just clipping those edges together before I head to the sewing machine. And I'm gonna sew that with a 3 8 inch seam allowance again. And we're gonna go around that curve at the side seam that makes the high-low hem there. And we're going to leave a space open at the back about six to eight inches long. So you'll see I'll backstitch and take this off the machine and then start again to finish the rest of the bottom hem. And of course you want to notch your curves before we turn it right side out again. And you're gonna see I'm pulling the vest right side out through that six to eight inch hole I left in the bottom hem. And I'm gonna use the bamboo point turner and my hands to just smooth out the rest of those curves and corners and give that a good press. You're gonna turn the raw edges of that remaining gap in 3 8 of an inch and press it. And then we're going to pin or clip that shut. And then we'll sew that and then continue sewing around the entire vest body. So we're gonna do the bottom hem and that will turn into the center fronts. And up to the collar. And then we're gonna go across the neckline.
and back down the other side. To finish, we're going to edge stitch the armholes and I'm just going to show you one of them, but we'll just do the same as we did on the body of the vest. We're just going to edge stitch all the way around each armhole. Closures are optional. We suggest doing buttons or snaps. You can use your preferred placement or the guidelines provided on the pattern. And I'm using an automatic buttonholer and I've done a test, so I'm just comparing those before I open the buttonholes. I'm using my seam ripper to open up my buttonholes and you can use that or some small snips and then I'm marking through the buttonholes onto the opposite side of the vest for my button placement. And for the final step, you can machine sew or hand sew your buttons on. And that's it. That's the finished Winona vest. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or reach out to us on Instagram. Thanks for watching and look out for more pattern videos in the future.